Hey there guys, this is Basing Air 3 3 with the continuation of the Danganronpa Trigger Happy Havoc Let's Play and we are continuing with the murder of the Wait hold on, is there a way to no. Okay. So I guess uh chapter four. There we go. Let's just say for that. Uh I think we we could uh review how do I do that? I don't, I don't think it's a good idea to review with this Tribuki music, but let's just see what happens beforehand. So that Sakura Ogami, okay, that's the name. I knew it started with an S somewhere. Um, because knowing the recording day on the top right-hand corner, it has been a fuck all the time. I know I say that a lot, but this, this time literally it's been like about two months since I last recorded the episode. So I want to really remember what happened. So, want to come up file number four. This is a good review as well, in case anyone forgot about the LP and wanted a review as well. Um, the victim was Sakura Ogami. The time of death was estimated to be around 12 noon. 12 noon, okay, so like 12 p.m. The body was discovered in the rec room on the third floor of the school. There is evidence of a strong blow to the victim's head. No other injuries were noted. However, it seems that at some, at some point the victim suffered from violent vomiting of blood. So, it is our, um, hypothesis that she might have been poisoned rather than a blunt to the head that killed her. Rec room door. A chair has been jammed against the door within the rec room, blocking access from the outside. It is believed that the killer did, did this to create a locked room scenario. Alright then. Status, uh, Sakura was found dead seated in a chair, slumping forward. Traces of blood were found around her mouth, presumably from when she was vomiting blood. However, there was no injury or indication as to why she would have vomited blood. Aside from, you know, the poison. <laughs> a blood stain was found in the front of the shelf of magazines. The blood is presumed to be Sakura's. Well, who, who are those bloods who are there? I mean, unless we could take a blood test, it's very hard to figure out who the fuck it is. Unless, you know, we use simple logic. There is current or... Maybe the killer's tricking us, who knows, I don't know if do that. Whatever. There is currently no explanation as to how a bloodstain would have appeared so far away from where the victim was found. Polka Dot, candy wrapper. At one point, Aoi had been injured and taken to the nurse's office. After she was taken care of, she gave a piece of candy to Sakura, which had this type- Oh yeah, there was like a fiasco going on before the murder occurred as well, where- Jill and Aoi were having a fight, and Jill kind of like wrecked Aoi, so that could be the case. I guess like in terms of predicting who who done it, it's probably Jill. So, but again, like it could be one of those uh, scenarios where the game would think that she's the killer when in actuality is not. But at the same time, it's very hard to pinpoint who it is in this chapter. We got three suspects. One of them is presumed either Frame or the person who done it, while the other two... Well, actually, no, all three of them pretty much denies their involvement. Anyways, um... Uh, where was I? Oh, yeah. I had one point, blah, blah, blah. Like, okay, so. According to Aoi, she had monopolized this candy as soon as it had become available, so obtaining a piece would have been difficult to impossible. According to Aoi, she monopolized this candy as soon as- okay. So, she basically has the entire candy wrapper at her disposal, so it's, it would be impossible, or at least very, very, very difficult for anyone else to have it. Which, I think from the previous evidence, it shows Hiro having a polka dotted wrapper on his pocket. So, it's pretty much possible that he- is somehow involved as well. We kind of have two suspects, then again, it all could, also could be Byakuya doing all this shenanigans like he usually does when it comes to murder and shit. Ugh. There were pieces of red glass scattered near the table at the rec room. After finding the top and bottom pieces, it was concluded that the shards must have been from a bottle. Okay. Not only that, but there's a figure. Yeah, there's a figure. A monokuma figure was found lying on the rec room floor, and it would fit roughly in the palm of your hand. There was a number of red number, uh, a red number of bottles on the shelf of the rec room. Inside each bottle is monokuma figure. Additionally, there seems to be some kind of unknown correlation between the bottles. Let's have some chess pieces. Yeah, two of them are broken, so yeah. 
An empty protein drink was- oh. An empty protein drink was found near the rec room door. And it was above the glass. So it was placed after the break-in. Glass on the window- yeah. I'm just repeating with things. Locker handprint! If only we had some sort of dust, or like one of uh, Emma Sky's fingerprint dust thing to figure out whose fingerprints those are. A fresh handprint was found inside the rec room's open locker. Since the locker was open before they opened the locked room, there's no way someone was hiding in there before they arrived. And again, it also could be Sakura's handprint, so... Yeah. Who knows? And again, with hands like that, I don't think it's really hers because those hands are not that big. Like, I feel like that's like the size of my hand right there. My hands are pretty average size, I guess. I always count. Sakura had written notes to Toko, Byakuya, and Yasuhiro asking them to meet her in the rec room by noon. She had slid the notes underneath each person's room door, which I'm going... Which, from what I remember, I think none of them actually appeared. Either that, or they hide the fact that they appeared. Alright, let's see here. Byakuya confirmed that he received Sakura's note, but also claimed that he never went to see her, and in fact had not seen her at all that day. If we're trying to... Or, wait, hold on. Toko confirmed that she received Sakura's note, but also claimed that she never went to see her. Yeah, but that's only a witness discount. Not, we can't really... So we can confirm that Aoi definitely bring the... Brought the uh, note without a doubt. We have not talked to Hiro about it, so. A small bit of garbage accidentally fell out of Yasuhiro's pocket. It was a piece of paper with red polka dots on it. Yellow powder! This could be the poison. Yellow powder was found on the insteps of Sakura's foot. Kyoko's examination summary Sakura suffered two blows to the head, not one. No blow was found on either of her hands. Okay. All of Monokuma's bottles appear to be roughly the same weight, however, when the bottle shards were weighed against an intact bottle, the shards were found heavier. So there were two bottles in one, basically. On the magazine shelf, one of the magazines had been put back upside down. Inside the magazine, Toko's name has been written in blood. It is assumed that whoever wrote it is used... Whoever wrote it used their finger to do so. Alright. On the shelf in the chem lab. Oh my god. Is this all gonna be on the test? <laughs> I'm gonna have to remember all this shit. Okay, so C's have a chemical romance. I'm sorry. <laughs> Harmful chemicals, aka poison. Uh, B is contains reagents. And A is supplements. Okay. There was a broken powder in the front. Blah blah blah. Yada blah blah. According to Byakuya, the powder would have led to have been spilled after the incident took place. Of course, this is according to Byakuya, so who knows if we could even trust his word or not. So that have been spilled. Af after? After the incident took place. Okay. Footprints in the powder. Those look like sandals, and Sakura wore sandals, so... Someone had left footprints in the powder spill, blah blah blah, these... And that's all. So... We have three suspects. For this case of the murder, possibly maybe four if we're gonna assume that Sakura did this as a suicide. Although poison is one hell of a way to go. Anyways, Monokuma made his announcement and everyone got, uh, began to met up one after another. And then... <laughs> the ultimate martial artist! A locked room murder mystery! What? <laughs> oh, I just recently discovered the power of emoticons! Like, no matter how awful something is, if you toss in a smiley face, it turns positive! Yes, indeed! For example, <laughs> you're at a picnic and you find a dead body! <laughs> oh, is this like a funny movie or something? Hey, remember that movie with the dead penguin and a dead dog from... Oh shit, I... where was I going for this? I was trying to reference some... Um... Oh fuck, did I forget that movie? It was like a Pixar movie and I forgot it. It had sadness, it had joy. I think you guys know what it is, but I forgot the title of the, the movie. <sighs> this is just plain creepy. Well? And how about the reverse? No matter how great something is, if you put it in a sad face, it makes it look super negative. Yes, indeed. For example, hmm. do you have a hundred friends? 
do I indicate jealousy within that text? What? What? He's right! That does make it seem sad! I can't wait! Now then! Wait. Please, get on the elevator! I'll see you all down there! What the hell was that? Good, it's not her annoying form. God damn it. Alright. Uh, I don't get it. Just the worst. I don't get you guys. How can you act so casual after murdering someone? D don't look at me. Uh, I don't think then again. And I hate, and I really hate to bring this up because I always waifu material. She could be trying to frame someone here as another possibility. But, ugh. Who the fuck knows? I was like, ugh. It's just, I don't want to think about that. If that's the case, then. Oh, god damn it, waifu, why? Oh, anyways. Uh, I don't think I'm acting casual. Don't be mean. Uh, I mean, I didn't murder anyone! <laughs> yeah, I'm c c completely innocent! How d dare you call me a m murderer! What the heck? Whatever. <laughs> Either way, the truth will be revealed soon enough. Because there can be no doubt, one of us is the culprit. Or it could be Sakura suicide, who knows? The killer. The one that murdered Sakura. She was stronger than anyone I know, and yet, someone killed her. Alright, and that person is here. That person is one of us. Let's go for it. Oh shit, I forgot the iPhone thing! God damn, I forgot to dictate how long it took for us to record all this shenanigans-ies. Do it on a minute. Let me... Might as well take a quick break while we're at it. It's been 12 minutes, so we'll be right back with the next episode of Danganronpa. Stay tuned.